Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to be reviewing Spider-Man Miles Morales and full warning ahead, we are delving into spoilers as I mentioned. So if you haven't played the game yet, haven't finished it fully and you do not want to be spoiled, make sure you click away and come back once you have completed the game. I am of course joined by Evan Falarka, leader of the Spidey Squad. Evan, thank you so much for joining me today to talk uh, Spidey Miles Morales. How are you? I'm doing very well, sir. Thank you very much for having me on your amazing channel. As always, it's always a pleasure. Absolutely, and thank you so much for joining. So, Evan, you've had the chance to play Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I thought that we could just go through kind of the story at first. We'll talk a little bit about the gameplay and some of the gameplay evolutions that, that were provided by the game. And um, I was really personally taken aback by a lot of the changes they made with the combat. I was very much so expecting the combat to feel pretty much the same with just a rehash story. And then when I played it and realized with the whole Venom powers and the invisibility, there was actually a lot that was evolved. And maybe we could just first, you know, start talking about the gameplay. I thought that there were pros and cons to the gameplay in this game with overwhelmingly, I thought the gameplay was actually improved over the 2018 title. One of the improvements I thought, once again, was the Venom and the camo, uh, you know, uh, uh, camouflage feature. I thought that that was great. I thought that one of the downsides, though, is that... You know, the the gameplay didn't have as many gadgets. Like, we only pretty much had four gadgets that you could utilize. And that was one of the things that I loved about the 2018 game, is that it was a classic Insomniac game that reminded me of Ratchet & Clank with your, like, spin wheel with all the gadgets you had. And unless I'm mistaken, and you can switch them out, in Spider-Man Miles Morales, you only have four gadgets. But the gadgets are more effective. Like, you have those drones that, that'll go out and, and beat people up for you. So, I don't know. What did you think about the gameplay? Overall, I thought it was actually an improvement over the 2018 title. It's certainly a massive difference from two years' time, from 2018 to now in 2020, of just how incredibly different Insomniac have made two separate Spider-Man's play styles, with Peter being more agile acrobatic and graceful with the way he fights using gadgets and his webs as well as aerial combat and ground combat but a lot of acrobatic improvisation with the mannerisms in how he fights but miles i really appreciate how insomniac approached his character to truly flesh him out as different as possible with the combat and of course the web swinging with the combat it was really intriguing to see the utilization of all of the venom powers with the way that he can jump in the air and juggle enemies with them go and flat out punch them with extra force or dash towards them for extra speed, as well as utilizing less gadgets than Peter, which is very intriguing because of how they're trying to fully differentiate Miles from Peter in the sense that Peter is much more intellectual than Miles. Even though Miles in this game's universe is still pretty damn smart, it shows that Peter has been around a lot longer than Miles, so he's more accustomed with the way and how he can incorporate his intelligence with his combat, whereas Miles... He's using gadgets with certain characters, which we won't spoil just yet, who actually provide him some tech in the game to help out take enemies. And also Peter helping him out with those like early hologram drones and stuff like that, as well as the gravity well and the web shooter. So even though it's not as many gadgets, it's still different enough from Peter to give Miles his own unique play style. And mixing and matching all the gadgets with the Venom powers and the acrobatic combat and the invisibility. There's a lot more variety here in terms of gameplay and combat, which wasn't initially present in Spider-Man PS4, but I still found myself having a ton of fun just mixing and matching all the different powers with the combos that you can try out and take out foes with. Yeah, I absolutely love the combat in this game. In fact, right after this commentary, I honestly want to hop on and stream and just play more because the combat really is a lot different. And I, I wonder how will the adjustment be to the um, Spider-Man 2 coming out in either 2021 or 2022? Do we know yet exactly what year? It is not officially confirmed yet when exactly the specific date could be for the yeah. sequel's release. However, they, you know, early spoilers... The, the ending of Miles pretty much heavily confirms that the sequel is coming, that it is going to be coming soon, and there was a recent post actually from the president and CEO, Jim Ryan, over at PlayStation, saying that even though the PlayStation 5 just came out and Miles Morales is in fact a cross-gen title with the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, uh, Jim Ryan himself did say that the true generation-defining games for the PlayStation 5 won't actually release until 
2022. And kind of what we've been theorizing about this is that even though Miles has started as a cross-gen game, I think that it is in Sony and Insomniac's best interest, as well as Marvel's, to make the official sequel for Marvel's Spider-Man with, of course, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 exclusive only on the PlayStation 5. That way they can fully enhance the graphics and the gameplay capabilities that that game could entail on full-fledged next-gen hardware. And of course, even though it's not really a spoiler for Miles since it was teased at the very end of the first game with Harry Osborn being enveloped in the symbiote, I definitely think that we are going to get Black Suit Spider-Man gameplay by the time the sequel comes out down the line. And seeing how the PlayStation 5 can take that even further in terms of the story capabilities, the graphic quality, and the gameplay aesthetic of how you can fight as Peter in the Black Suit compared to how he works in the Red Suit is going to be a huge trip to witness unfold. Yeah, and I'm super excited to see any evolutions or changes to the map. Obviously, with this game being kind of more of like Uncharted Lost Legacy type of experience, um, you know, they used a lot of the same map from the 2018 game. And in 2022, when Spider-Man 2 comes out, I'd love to see some like new aspects to the map and kind of expanding upon it in that way. Let's hop into the story. And I wanted to get your thoughts on um, sort of the intro of the game. One thing that really took me... Uh, took me aback was the music. I thought the music was phenomenal, especially when you press start, the game loads up, you get off the train and subway, and they're kind of introducing you to Miles's view of New York City, and you're, we're kind of following his POV at first, and we see that his mother is running for city council, and we see that he is then summoned by Peter. One thing that I'm curious to know is how did you think Peter was integrated into the game? And did you think that, you know, they did a good job at integrating him or, or um, you know, he wasn't in it very much. Uh, he was in it actually less than I was anticipating, which I thought was OK. But um, I'm curious to get your thoughts on that. I was actually uh, genuinely surprised because Peter was actually in the game more than what I thought he would be. Because since that this is, in fact, a standalone Miles Morales game and this takes place one year after the events of Spider-Man PS4, Miles has been training alongside of Peter I would have assumed that Peter would be, you know, doing some other stuff in the city on his own, researching something relating to Oscorp or whatever, you know, kind of, you know, connecting back to the whole Devil's Breath situation that was in the first game. Maybe research more since he is aware, since Mary Jane told him that Harry isn't doing well. Maybe he could have investigated something on that front. But they flat out just had this amazing opening with Peter and Miles together, which heavily teases the possibility of another feature being added in the official sequel of co-op play two player spider-man games would be insane to receive in the future with peter and miles together as a team and you and i for example could team up as them together in the sequel if they decide to do that and go that route would be incredible that would be fun just that first initial glimpse of that would be insane and seeing how well they incorporated that into miles's game with the chase of rhino and Peter of Spider-Man and Miles of Spider-Man going all throughout the city and the amazing set pieces that build up to that just seamlessly going back and forth from cinematic to action sequences was all fantastic. Now, again, I'm personally not a fan of the new visual design for Peter, but I love the narrative incorporation that he had with Miles being a mentor for him, guiding him along his path of becoming his own Spider-Man, but not necessarily holding Miles' hand or, you know, forcing him to do something that he may not want to do. Peter trusts Miles thoroughly, and that is heavily prominent with the way on how Yuri Lowenthal and Najee Jeter's performances flawlessly synchronize with each other as Miles and Peter. I think they both did an incredible job with their, you know, lines and delivery and their overall, you know, script that they were given, and just the way that they're acting towards each other as this really familial type of bond that they now have at the beginning and slight spoilers at the end of the game really just shows how well Insomniac knows these characters. And seeing how even though Peter was in this game for a brief moment, this is still fully and honestly a true Miles Morales story, bringing him into his own life that wasn't previously shown in the first game or even the you know popular Into the Spider-Verse movie. They did a great job of making this Miles their Miles, you know, the Insomniac Games universe Miles Morales, something that's completely different from the comics, the other films, the, the TV shows. And I really, really love the the connection that Miles has with Peter, as well as his friend Genki and his mom. And based on what we saw in this game, I, I'm really intrigued 
to see where that can go even further down the line. Well, as my audience knows, I'm a big Batman Arkham fan, obviously, and that's what really started my entire channel. And I thought that one of the, even in 2018, Evan, I remember we did a dual com together and I even came out and admitted like, yeah, you know, the big leg up that Insomniac has over other superhero video games is the way in which they structure their story. And not only that, the way they present their story, like with the motion cap and and shooting these scenes, these cutscenes in the game, like they're movie scenes, you know, it literally looks like that. And, and speaking of that, I thought in this game, one of the st probably my favorite scene in the game is the Christmas dinner scene with uh with rio and genki and finn and and miles yeah. all sitting around the, like i thought that that stuff was so good and one of the things that i wanted to see even more of in the game was the interaction between miles and finn because as this the game progresses you realize that is the most important relationship in the story and i thought it would have been great to get even more scenes to understand the friendship between miles and finn because you know we're told that they're best friends and we see some evidence of that but i thought they could have done even more to expand upon scenes like that like the christmas dinner scene and and going from there so in the story we're introduced to three villains um villains quote unquote not all of the these end up being villains so we're introduced to the tinkerer and prowler who i was really excited to see when he came on screen obviously and then also um simon krieger who is played by troy baker now out of these three, again, I use the term villains lightly, like I don't know that it that fully applies to either Prowler or the Tinker, but in the case of Simon Krieger, uh, played by Troy Baker, I was actually pretty underwhelmed with his performance. Um, maybe it was just the writing of the character. I thought that he was pretty generic. Um, it, it was one of those things like during the game, I thought he was like, oh, this is, you know, he's pretty interesting. He's pretty cool, whatever. And then I thought about it more and I was like, uh... I don't know. It was he. He didn't even show up in the third act either, which I thought was really weird. So I don't know. What did you think about the the villain cast in this game? Yeah, I, I love how they just added Troy Baker in there nonchalantly because we gotta get that check mark for him. Troy Baker in every game, check mark one thousand. Yeah, exactly. Boom. In Spider Man Miles Morales, we got Troy. It's a it's a match. But no, yeah, you're totally right. It was very underwhelming with his performance, even though Troy does a great job in every game he's in. I just think that the character structure of Simon Krieger, he's not really that well-known of a character in the Marvel lore in general. So seeing them incorporate him as kind of a throwaway character in this game is totally understandable since this obviously is, is not like the main core sequel for the Spider-Man universe. This is just a side story to showcase Miles becoming his own Spider-Man. That's and true. And for a character like Simon filling that type of role, just as a, you know, a, a small threat that Miles can take on, by his himself i thought he did a fine job with what he was given and the overall role that he served overall though you're right he wasn't that compelling he was kind of like a narcissistic sl slime ball in this company rocks on to show like the face of this corporation okay like they're, they're obviously greedy there's something not right here there's obviously a bigger thread to unravel with the ploy of rocks on new form and uh, the connection that they have with the underground and why they're so intrigued with the new form. And yeah, I, I think that he wasn't utilized to the best of his capabilities, but it just kind of showed like there's clearly a threat here that Miles has to take down. And alongside of the connection that he has with Finn, I also would have really liked to see that be thoroughly enhanced further as well, because that was the best part about Spider-Man PS4 for me personally. Everyone loves the swinging, the combat, the graphics are amazing too. For me, I would not have been as attached to that game if not for the relationship between Peter Parker and Otto Octavius. That was the most drawing factor for me as a fan of both of those characters and the performances that both Yuri Lowenthal and William Sawyers gave as the two was easily one of the most memorable moments I'll ever have when playing a game ever. Seeing that story unravel and intertwine between the other characters connecting and how this thing can go forward between the relationships as both Peter as Spider-Man and Peter Parker himself outside of the suit. And I thought we were going to get something like that as well with Miles and Finn as her alter ego, which I won't spoil yet. But I do understand that it's a shorter game, so they had to try and pan the runtime in certain areas. But I think if they really want to impact me personally on that front 
with their relationship, I would have liked to see a lot more of it instead of, mini spoiler, the small flashbacks that we got between them back and forth between the story. It felt kind of disjointed Agreed. in some parts. Like it didn't, it didn't flow too well with the story. It, it felt kind of out of place in certain moments, especially near the end of the game. Even though I did like that flashback, it didn't really flow well with the overall tone and setup yep. they were trying to build near the end portion of the, the game. But, but for what they had to work with and, the you know, of course, the amount of time that they had to try and encapsulate the story in, I think it did a, a fine job. Did it blow me away? No, but it, it really did solidify this interpretation of Finn, Simon Krieger, even Aaron Davis as the Prowler um, as very compelling characters that I actually would like to see a lot more of, like you were saying, that they were really great for what they were, but if they had even more time to be fleshed out further, it would have been even better. Yeah, I think that uh, kind of going back to what I said at, at the beginning, I thought that the game, the, the strongest act of the game was the first act, which is basically, again, I thought the best scene in the game was the Christmas dinner scene where we got to understand the connection between the characters and like just seeing them hanging out and being friends and like seeing Miles and the relationship that he has with Finn and I thought that that was really, really good, and I wanted to see more of that to make the third act more compelling, and I think exactly like you said, you know, they tried to shoehorn in some exposition of their friendship towards the end with flashback scenes, and I thought that that didn't work in terms of the pacing and timing, uh, whereas the, those, you know, the flashback scenes in and of themselves were not a huge issue, but it was very much so like they needed to pace it out a little bit better. I will say I was truly blown away by the, by the character of Finn. I thought that she was very, very intriguing and engaging as a character and then once again like towards the end of the first act we already learned very quickly that she is the tinkerer which I thought was a very bold move I thought it was going to be one of those uh, reveals that they waited to uh, for until the end of the second act or something but I thought that was a really good decision to uh, reveal her character right away. Uh, something we can get into more is that the character of Finn, I liked less and less as the game went on. And not because she became more of a villain. Yes. Uh, but I think that she became a lot less likable in the sense that she was constantly, first of all, she was a huge hypocrite. I mean, not to point this out because uh, it's obvious, but she literally was like, oh my God, you're keeping secrets from me. Oh my God, stop keeping secrets. And it's like, um, hello, you literally were the tinkerer the entire game and didn't tell Miles either. <laughs> okay. I thought that was so absurd. He's like, she's like, you always lie to me. You lie to me. And it's like, well, he didn't even mean for the Prowler to figure out where they were, you know, because basically he got framed by the Prowler, his uncle, and she didn't even acknowledge that. Like, she made it seem as though he was trying to get her caught or get her trapped by the Prowler or or whatever rocks on, which obviously was not his intention. So I thought that she was also really, she became pretty unlikable towards the end of the story. And also, she was so insistent. When Miles came to her and said, by the end of the game, well, I don't, I don't mean to get ahead of myself. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, so I think that the character of Finn kind of wore on me a little bit towards the end, but the foundation was so strong. And the thing that would have sold me a little bit more is if there was more of those like interpersonal interactions, kind of like we got a lot of in Spider-Man PS4 with, um, with Peter interacting with Aunt May at Feast and MJ like going on dates and that type of thing like those scenes were so good and those were the scenes that kind of uh, there weren't as many of those in this game for the, for the case of expediency and making the game shorter. I will say that I thought that one of the strengths of the game of, of playing through it was the pace of it like it was much faster than Spider-Man PS4 and um, I do think that we need more games like six to eight hour campaigns and stories like so many games are coming out these days with you know 30, 20 30 40 hour campaigns and it was really nice to play a game that you can kind of just you know beat in one sitting or two sittings um so i did i did quite enjoy that it's certainly in the bag you're absolutely right and it's again like different strokes for different folks is that it's funny saying but it's true is that i personally am in the in the camp that i actually do really prefer longer games i mean as a comparison spider-man ps4 what, for the base game, you know, initially released in 2018 with no DLC, the story for that alone with no side missions, just the core campaign itself, was around 16 to 18 hours. And for Miles Morales, it was 7 to 10 hours for just the story. And then on top of that, if you add side missions, you know, of course, you get like a few extra hours of story content and the right. DLC for Spider-Man added like a total amount with DLC, side missions, and the base game for Spider-Man PS4. Now, 
adds up to about 30 plus hours worth of content, which is insane. That's a huge game for a triple A super game. And I love that type of length, but you're totally right. Is that some people may not have that amount of time and may just want to embrace themselves in a quickly, you know, coherent narrative that ties into the bonds of the characters that you're playing as and trying to figure out more about when seeing the story unfold, but not want to have to fill in, you know, for filler may not want to go and pad out for time. Just see a story, have the story be told, and then be done with it. And I think Miles certainly accomplishes that in spades. But I think that the relationships and the connectivity that he has with these side characters of Genki, his mom, Finn, Aaron Davis, uh, even, you know, some moments where he's reminiscing about his dad, who's, you know, gone, would have been really, really well done if it got more time to expand You're right. it further. And specifically for the character of Finn, I find it, you know, interesting too is that she's pretty much a hypocrite but also miles is kind of not as smart as he is near the end of the game he's like oh i gotta tell finn that the reactor is gonna blow because it's been tinkered with with, by simon and the new form is gonna cause a huge meltdown of harlem so just tell her dude he's like trying to have oh my god to talk to her right there like just say it flat out you know he's kind of like not really as you know totally there during that moment he's just kind of like trying to figure out how to connect with finn personally to reason with her, which I do understand because of the loss of her brother, Rick Mason, and she's not in the best mindset during that moment of the game. But telling her flat out that you're going to kill literally thousands of people because of what you're doing would probably get her attention. So instead of just waiting around for the right moment, telling her immediately would be just as effective. So, yeah, there's some narrative beats that aren't really as consistent or make sense with what Miles and Finn were doing throughout the game. And, you know, the the, un, the 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 way on how she's becoming more and more unstable as the narrative progresses is a clear sign of that, which is a core testament to the narrative they're trying to showcase for her character and how Miles is trying to be the light at the end of the tunnel for her, trying to give her that, you know, shine of hope right. that it's not all over for her. We can try and take out Roxanne together as a team, and she's only going down this dark path by herself because of what they did to her brother. I respect that. I totally understand what they're going for. But I think they could have approached it in a better way. And, you know, again, with the flashbacks not really meshing as well as they should have during the moments of the story, um, having uh, Uncle Aaron as the Prowler kind of be teased as the villain at the beginning, but then just immediately kind of shift towards a path like I have to save you, Miles, because I'm supposed to be a good guy, but I'm acting like a bad guy. And you get that, you know, that duality between the character of Aaron Davis and the Prowler. Like, is he really a villain or a friend? how that is affecting miles on a personal level. It seemed a bit rushed on that front as well, but I do really still appreciate the way and how they went about it. I just think it would have helped more if we spent more time with, with these characters in full. Yeah, I definitely, definitely agree. Another thing that I wanted to get your thoughts on was the prowler. So I thought that the prowler and including him in here was a great move, obviously a fan favorite out of into the spider verse, the movie and he's a pretty interesting character out of the comics, and his his profile has been elevated a lot by this game and the movie, obviously. But um, yeah, Aaron Davis, the uncle of Jefferson Davis, Miles Morales' father, is featured in the game. Their backstory is a little bit different than Into the Spider-Verse. Um, how the Prowler comes to be, how Miles learns who the Prowler is, all of that was changed up quite a bit, which I thought was was an improvement. So what were your thoughts on the differences and and do you think that they insomniac improved the origin of the prowler from into the spider verse or you know it's more or less equal what did you think about the prowler in the game i will certainly say that it, it, the, both representations of the prowler from this game and into the spider verse are a massive improvement from the original you know reveal and character portrayal of aaron davis in the ultimate comic since he just kind of portrayed as like a dick he's not right. really like all that there as as a fatherly figure or as a kind hearted or, you know, very uh, trustworthy individual that miles can bond with and connect to. And of course that was the big moment of spider versus the betrayal of Aaron Davis and seeing that miles found out that he was the prowler the whole time. And that completely caught him off guard and almost traumatized him to a certain point. And we had to, you know, confront him during the uh, house fight at Aunt May's apartment or home in Queens that, um, it just shocked him to his core that, oh, my God, my uncle is the Prowler. And he reveals himself as Spider-Man to him and seeing like, oh, my God, my nephew is 
Spider-Man. So that whole emotional moment there. And of course, then he, he gets galocked by Kingpin with his gun. So that was insane <laughs> too. doing that as well. It was a like massive, you know, shocking moment during that scene. In the yeah, film. it was. But for uh, Miles Morales, we didn't get, um, you know, a sad goodbye or farewell scene for Aaron Davis, but rather, funny enough, a redemption arc. So almost like the opposite of Spider-Verse where, you know, Aaron Davis was so far gone in that film and he was so far down the path of the Prowler that he had to fight his own nephew and not realize it until it was too late. Right. Here, right off the bat, which is also, a, you know, a weird shift for the tone is that it, that felt a bit quick, too, and a little bit rushed, is that Aaron immediately knew that Miles was Spider-Man. Like in the second mission of the game, you're helping out citizens with the friendly neighborhood spider app. You go to this, you know, subway transit. You're helping out the technician there and you talk to him and you do the side mission for him and oh that's fun helping out the you know people in new york great oh hey miles how's it going so that was a huge you know shock for me i did not expect them to right off the bat know that you know have aaron know that miles was spider-man and then have that personal connection of the relatability that miles can share with his uncle on that personal level and then find out later on that he's the prowler but then they end up teaming up together instead of fighting each other. So that was a very interesting twist. And then we receive the turn of Aaron Davis later on, where he sold out uh, the Tinker's location, but he didn't mean to sell out Miles, because in this game, he actually does really, really care about Miles. He's not trying to do anything out of ill intent or manipulate him in any way. He's actually a very caring uncle who has misplaced his own you know, way of life and his own setting within the family of the Morales is, you know, Rio. And after the passing of his brother Jefferson uh, in the first game during the city hall bombing, he felt disconnected and became disconnected to the family even further. And then, you know, picked up the life again of being the prowler. So it was very you know, compelling to learn more about his backstory throughout the game and seeing how he connected to miles, both as Aaron Davis and the prowler when they're both in and out of the suits was very, very enriching to envelop yourself in for the story. But again, during that final battle, since we now know Pro is in the game, I can say this, the final battle of when they're fighting the subway terminal, and he kind of says, I, you know, I messed up, but we're family, and then he kind of turns on him saying, like, you know, I can't do what you want me to do because I'm always going to be Spider-Man. That was very, you know, impactful and very compelling to Miles' character, but it, it didn't hit as hard for me, for example, as what I would have felt between the connection of Peter and Otto or even Peter and Martin Lee, even though that wasn't really as fleshed out as it could have been as well in Spider-Man PS4. And Martin didn't know that Peter was Spider-Man in that game. I still felt bad having to fight Martin as Mr. Negative while being Spider-Man, even though obviously he killed people. And I know that what he's doing is wrong. I still felt genuinely bad fighting Martin Lee because of what he's experienced with, you know, the Oscorp treatment with him getting, you know, tested on as a kid and, you know, hit the loss of his parents and stuff like that. Knowing his backstory made me more connected to his character. So even though we did get some more insight to Uncle Aaron's background near parts of the game, it didn't hit as hard as I would have liked it to within the core narrative. But I still really appreciate it for what it was. Yeah, yeah, I, t I totally, totally get that. And, and I think I think I agree I thought that the changes they made to his his backstory were super interesting and bold and and interesting. Like I said, I think the other thing, the other reason they revealed him so early is kind of the same reason that if we go back to again, I'm big into the Arkham game, so going back to Batman Arkham Knight, that game would have actually benefited a lot from revealing Red Hood earlier because it was so obvious that it was Jason Todd who was the Arkham Knight. And I thought it was the same thing here. Like if they didn't reveal the identity of the Prowler or if they didn't reveal the identity of um, of the tinkerer, right? It would have been it would have been so obvious to us that like when they take off the mask at the end of the second act of the game, we'd be like, oh duh. Like we know that. There's only five characters in the whole game. Right. You know? It's like it's not really a secret in that sense because, you know, it's like, okay, well, we have our uncle, we have our friend Finn, we have Genki, and then we have our mom. That's the plot. And it's like, you know, how many people can it be, really? So I thought that that was Actually, thinking back on it, that was kind of the only way they could do it, even though it did seem, I do agree, it did seem a little weird for both the Tinker and the Prowler to have their identities revealed so suddenly, uh, looking back on it, I don't know if there's any other way they really could have done it. So that sets up pretty much all of the first act. And then the second act, I would say, is really about Miles going into the underground and kind of learning more about that group. 
And eventually, Miles obviously tells her, uh, tells Finn that um, he is Spider Man. And Rio also learns Miles' identity. I thought that was kind of rushed in a sense when Rio yeah. learned about Miles' identity. Was it just me on that? No, I, I, I totally agree. It did feel very uh, sudden, you know, very yes. like quick to go to that factor of him, compelled to know that, oh my God, I have to make sure that the city is okay but still finn is coming after me and she can't trust me anymore because she knows that i lied about being spider-man so then i immediately am damaged and cut to going back to my home and then it just so happens that his mom's there and just walks in sees him in the spider-man suit so that and then also they cut to him like i have to tell you something and then he just catches her up on all the stuff that happened with him being spider-man i would have liked to have a, a more personal moment again with them or at least flesh that out even further uh like we said previously through a longer length of the game's runtime but since it is shorter than the first game they have to try and make those moments short but sweet and for what it was it was very good it was still a good scene between her and him discussing him being spider-man and just what they have to do as a family and seeing that he still is going to go out there and save the city no matter what as his own spider-man which is very very compelling but uh, I think it would have helped more if we got more scenes between just him as Miles and his mom instead of him as Spider-Man and talking to her over the phone and not really being there in person with her. And because I personally would have liked to learn more about her campaign, what's going on there, what's happening with her right. overall role as a city councilwoman because of how she has been affected by the loss of Jefferson Davis, her husband, and Miles' dad. and. Because of that, she moved to Harlem due to his passing and wanting to fight for her city even more than ever. So now coming to the realization that her son is putting himself in danger just as her husband was, Miles' dad, how does that affect her as a mom? How does that affect her knowing that her son is Spider-Man, this 17-year-old kid going out saving the city from you know, explosions and gunfire and, you know, people wanting to hurt other people. Like, is she in, I guess she's okay with it by the end of the game, but still as a, you know, monthly figure and how she's running her campaign and all this stuff, I would really like to see the personal connections that she has made with Miles as himself, besides being Spider-Man and now knowing that he has these powers and she's now suddenly okay with it. I would have liked to have that be explored a little bit more. Yeah. 100%. I, I totally agree with that. So, yeah, we kind of infiltrate the underground as Miles. I thought that that was a really good scene, kind of getting a behind-the-scenes look into their underground base and operation and the learning about their jetpack tech. It was like this grungy, uh, like, techno type of group. It was really, really weird and interesting, vaguely, like, anarchist. I, I really liked their vibe that they were given off there in the underground. That was a lot of fun. And then from there, we obviously get abducted and fight with Rhino, with Finn, as Miles. And um, then we infiltrate the Roxxon base and kind of uh, figure out that Krieger is planning to basically amplify the new form such that it will destroy all of Harlem. Uh, I don't know why he wants to do that because he's an evil bad villain, I guess. That was kind of like one of the bigger problems I have with the game is it's like, why is Simon Krieger bad? Because he's big and bad and that's what bad people do. It's like, wait, why <laughs> Why does he want to blow up a whole city? <laughs> like, why does he want to blow up all of Harlem? You know, uh, if he's really like Money a... talks. Well, yeah, but he's not getting paid for blowing people up. Like, if he just, why? What if the new form just worked and then he made a bunch of money? Wouldn't that be better for him to do that? To just be like, Probably. the new form just works and there's power to everybody, and it's, you know, this like magic kind of avatar, uh, uh, alternative energy. It's like, oh, that's cool. Then he'd probably be super rich instead of going to jail right now. Come on, Krieger, get with it, bro. Uh, so anyway, oh, yeah. so, um, yeah, there was like three rhino boss fights in this game. That was interesting. Am I, yes, there were, w were there legitimately three? There's one at the beginning, the one, the beginning, the one, the armor, I guess that it was only two, but it felt like more. Yeah. Honestly, there was, there was kind of like a few parts of that one that was a bigger boss fight, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought that the boss fights were pretty good. Definitely. Um, I don't, how do you think they stack up against the boss fights in the first game? I did die a few times during the Tinkerer fight. I will Dude, be honest. Dude, me too. That, that was, was hard. Pretty darn tough. That was very tough with the uh, giant saw blades and stuff. That yeah. was insane. Um, and it, I, I'm very curious to learn how exactly her technology works. I still have no clue, but very, very intriguing nonetheless. <laughs> but 
you're right. At least for the narrative implications, you're absolutely right. Is that Simon Krieger is responsible for the death of Finn's brother, Rick. Right. Um, and that's why she becomes the tinkerer because she wants to expose Roxxon for the injustices that she that they have done to her brother because they basically killed him and sabotaged the you know new form project under his you know nose because they stole it from him. So you would think that this was going to be an extremely emotional moment. Like maybe instead of just fighting Finn, maybe she could have gone after Simon personally to kill him. And then yeah, Miles why didn't could have she? Gone in to stop her saying, no, this is wrong. We can send him to jail the right way. Although, to their credit, that would have been the same exact ending that happened for Spider-Man PS4 Fair. with Norman Osborn and Otto Fair. Octavius. So they're going about it a different way uh, for Finn going extreme, trying to blow up the entire uh, reactor to take down Roxxon completely. But she didn't know that it was going to destroy all of Harlem until uh, Miles made her aware of that. So I understand it, uh, but I think that the personal connections there didn't hit as hard again with Otto and Peter because that whole ending for the first game, I hate to keep comparing them both, but it's true. Like the ending for Spider-Man PS4, I was in tears that whole fight. Like, I don't want to fight you, Otto. I love being able to work with you and learn more about you and seeing how much Peter cares about you. Clearly you mean the entire world to him and me as a player. Like I love this version of Otto. So seeing him go down this super sad route, was a travesty to witness, and it made me as a player super in like in shock. Like, oh my, I do not want to fight you, Otto. This is insane. And then that huge payoff where he was going to kill Norman, and he didn't do it because Peter came in time to stop him and then fight him during that insane boss fight. Now, I did die a couple times there too, but I was mainly because I was distracted because of the narrative uh, implications of Peter and uh, Otto's relationship with each other. Like, oh my God, this is like a father and his son fighting to the death. And it's like insane to see this go out in such a terrible way. But seeing that relationship go in such an extremely engaging manner and just the disconnection of Peter and Otto at the very end, like, you know what, this is wrong. I can't be by your side anymore. I'm done with you. And just seeing that huge moment happen where he's like, Peter, where are you going? Like, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. Was showing how Peter is now, given up on auto or he's given him all the chances possible, but he now knows that the auto that he knew is not coming back. And that was a huge factor to the story and the impact that it had on me as a player, you know, going through that scene for this, I was just dying because the boss fight was actually really hard between yeah, Finn yeah. and miles. Not like, Oh my God, Finn, I don't want to hurt you. Like, no, you're kind of being unreasonable here. You're not listening to miles with what he's trying to say. You should understand that he had to keep the secret from you of him being Spider-Man because he's literally Spider-Man and he has to keep his identity secret to protect people like you and just how that could affect, you know, the relationship he has with his mom and Genki and all these other people that could know his identity. Whereas the tanker, she's causing mayhem throughout the city because she's just mad because they killed her brother, which I understand, but it didn't resonate with the narrative as much as I would have liked it to on that personal engaging level. Um, but near the end of the game, when they're fighting through the rocks on, the boss fight itself was very much engaging with Prowler and Rhino and Tinkerer, um, as well as some of the hologram drones that you fight with Peter's training, which is fun. But uh, it definitely has that same structure of these boss fights are fun, but they're not like challenging for at least in the sense of I got to think about how I fight this person. It's usually just I got to go in, spam some web shots, dodge a lot, and then punch them. And then that's it. Whereas for the Arkham games, to compare to that, the Mr. Freeze boss fight is literally one of, if not the best boss fights in any superhero game of all time in Arkham City. It's fantastic because it makes you think about the character, what they're capable of doing, and think about how they would try and defeat you as this hero, as Batman in that game. So this, and in future Spider-Man games, I hope that they do learn from that and seeing, well, in the sequel, for example, say that we end up fighting Venom, he clearly is, you know, uh, aware of Spider-Man's spider sense, he's invulnerable to that, you know, and, and he's also vulnerable to fire and sound. So how can we fight a, a foe like Venom on his own playing field while trying to take him out using his weaknesses to our advantage? So using that in, like, boss fights for a technical perspective, I would like to see more of that be incorporated going forward. But for the game itself, I thought they were really fun. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, so after Miles gets captured by Aaron... And um, 
Aaron Davis, obviously, the Prowler, and then they have their kind of boss fight. I, I totally agree, by the way, your note, regarding the boss fights that they need in, in the uh, Spider-Man 2, so, a, a boss fight that's a little bit more challenging and isn't so focused on, like, QTEs and kind of their... It, they're too similar to, like, the type of free-flow combat they've already established, the boss fights are. Like, they need to differentiate them just a little bit more from the main combat. Uh, we, we saw that particularly with the Prowler boss fight, where it was a lot of just, like, oh, you know, dodge and then roll and then whatever, and then, you know, punch back when they're... It, I, I thought it was a little bit repetitive. Um, so then in the third act, I thought the game definitely heated up a little bit. I still don't think it matched the story setup of, of the first act. But with the underground and Roxxon fighting in the streets, and then we like fought against both of them, I thought that was yeah. really, really good. That was such fun combat that was one of the gameplay highlights of the story for me where we're fighting like both of these factions are fighting against one another and uh yeah one time i hit up on the roof and i was like maybe they'll just like all shoot each other and then i'll have to fight and then i just sat up there for minutes and nothing happened so i was like okay well i'm gonna have to actually fight these guys so um i really love that dynamic it was a whole lot of fun and um that was one of my favorite combat moments it, even though it wasn't a boss fight it was one of my favorite combat moments in the game Totally agree, because it made you, in the action, think on your toes. Like, oh my god, there's this giant gunfight in the street. The snow is getting in the way, too, so it's hard to see the enemies. There's all this destruction going on, but you know that each of these factions need to be taken down as quickly as possible, so that way the people in Harlem don't get hurt. Which I really love, again, the incorporation of the story on top of the gameplay. Yeah. You're in Harlem connecting to the people of that district in new york because the other districts you know there's chinatown there's the financial district there's midtown all these areas in the city are wonderful and they're still as equally as important as every other place that you're exploring but miles lives in harlem in this game story and throughout the game you're learning more about the residents there you're helping them out with the side missions you're there caring about each of these individuals and seeing how roxon and the new form reactor is in the heart of harlem is going to absolutely disintegrate it by the time that it, if it explodes, you are more incentivized as the player to try and stop what's going on because you truly genuinely care about the people and the world that you yourself, Spider-Man, Miles, you as the player are living in. Right. And I truly think that's a huge testament to the writing that Insomniac have done for this interpretation of Miles because usually he lives in Brooklyn, not really in Harlem at all. That's more for Luke Cage, but it still shows how they can try and blend something fresh with something familiar. And I really do appreciate how they approached it here with making Harlem feel like its own character. You know, the residents are more vibrant. The, the art culture is living and breathing in that district of Manhattan compared to the other districts. And by the end of the game, yeah, when you see that whole firefight occur between rocks on the underground, you want to stop it at all costs because you don't want anyone to get caught in the crossfire. And it was a truly engaging moment uh, leading up to that uh, near the uh, Oscorp Science Center near the end of the game and then trying to swing as fast as you can to where it was going to go down in Harlem. And that was a, tr a truly, you know, eviscerating moment to witness unfold and truly, you know, exciting to finally get there. Like, OK, I'm here. Now it's time to save everybody. And I really, really had a blast going through that myself. Yeah. And one of my favorite moments in the game is after um, Miles kind of defeats the the tinkerer so to speak and uh she dies uh finn dies then you know he comes back down and he's unmasked and there's a whole group of probably i don't know seven eight nine people that uh civilians that see his face and what he looks like and then all these journalists rush up and they ask the citizens of harlem they're like hey what did, what did he look like like tell us who it is and they're all just like, no, I'm not snitching, not saying anything. He's like, he's Spider-Man, you know, and I thought that was so great. And it showed that, you know, obviously Spider-Man is is a character that is intrinsically connected to New York City, the culture of New York City and everything like Spider-Man and New York. They go hand in hand. And with Miles, I love that they sort of like specialize that even more of like, well, of course, you know, he is a hero for New York City, but more than that, he also is a hero for, like, Harlem in particular, and I think the the residents of Harlem have a particular affinity for Miles Morales and, and have some, like, ownership of him because, you know, he he clearly has a special connection with that city in a way that Peter—with that 
uh, neighborhood within the city that that Peter doesn't have. I thought that was such a great moment towards the end of the game there, where uh, where all the civilians kind of stood up for him and and didn't didn't rat him out. So I thought that was great too. It, it, and it's a great, a wonderful way to show how different Miles is from Peter. Even when you're going in the city and, you know, just walking down the street and saying hi to the civilians, Miles does like this little fun dance. He's always shooting out like the the finger guns and like, hey, what's up? And, you know, also talking in Spanish as well. So he's bilingual, which also showcases the cultural representation that Insomniac incorporated into Miles' character and seeing that, you know, that whole payoff by the end of the game, like, Who's that guy? Oh, he's our Spider-Man. So now there's two full-fledged Spideys in New York, kicking ass, taking names. And the residents of Harlem mainly see Miles as their Spider-Man compared to Peter. And it was also cool, as a little side mention to that character, Haley Cooper, the, the deaf girl, where Miles is talking to her with the sign language. Oh, she yeah. She says to him, oh, I've always had a Spider-Man growing up as a kid, but seeing how there's a Spider-Man here where I grow up, in my neighborhood caring about us means the world to me and so many others. And that's just a really cool factor to witness for Miles's character and seeing how before at the start of the game, he didn't know what Harlem really was. He wasn't really aware of his surroundings, right? And not really, you know, fitting in as a person, but also as a Spider-Man still feeling like he needs to live up to Peter and become uh, in the same legacy that he's embedded himself in. But by the end of the game, he is, his own spider-man on his own terms saving people his way fighting crime his way being himself and that's the tagline of the game is be yourself and they delivered that to a t and it just wonderfully encapsulates how anyone can be spider-man peter miles you me anyone and i think that they showcase that in spades with this portrayal of miles really hitting home to the familial aspect of connections with people you care about and making those bonds that you have grow stronger with you as a person and you as a hero to fight for the ones that you care about and seeing that that's extremely prevalent with the residents of Harlem and Miles as Spider-Man together is a, a true, you know, wonderful thing to see. And I really, really loved how they pay that off by the end of the game. Yeah, definitely. And before we talk about the end credit scene, I just wanted to get your final rating on the story, which you don't have to. I mean, some people just are like, well, doing a rating system or, or putting an experience like a video game, which is a piece of art from like a scale of one to 10 is kind of silly, which I kind of agree with in a sense. You know, I thought about it a little bit and I thought, well, maybe an 8.5, maybe a nine. I thought overall the story was incredible. It it kept me gripped the entire time. I kept wanting to go from mission to mission. In fact, if you w go back and watch my Let's Play, stream I actually was getting upset at some points because it wouldn't prompt me for the next mission it would be like oh um you know whatever uh Finn is going to call you back in a few hours to set up a time to meet and I'm like no I just want to meet right now I don't want to do any of these side missions you know because I really was engaged with the story and I wanted to to get to the end and figure out what happened so I thought that the story was really engaging it, the only problem with it kind of like we discussed is that I think it could have used an extra you know a, a, an extra couple of hours of padding particularly with building out some character moments getting uh, to you know hang out with Miles at, with, uh, with Rio uh, you know your mother hanging out with um, Finn and Genki I thought that um, Genki's interactions over the intercom were pretty good as a way to get to know him I, I thought that the ending the boss fight would have been strengthened if we had had more interactions with Finn or, or more flashback scenes and that type of thing. So because of that, because I thought that they did a great job establishing the foundation of Miles and Finn's relationship, but not going far enough, I, I'll, you know, drop it down to maybe like an 8.7 or an 8.8. .8. But overall, it's a fantastic game. I thought the gameplay improvements to the flow and speed with Venom and visibility, all of that was a fun and welcome, you know, addition to the game. And something that was a huge, huge advantage to give Miles that special flair uh, that to, to differentiate him from Peter. So uh, that is my rating. What say you? For me, I for, uh, to, as a comparison, I gave Spider-Man PS4 a solid 10 out of 10 because I genuinely think that that game is a masterpiece in storytelling, gameplay, visuals, and just overall understanding of the character of Spider-Man is what I, as a fan, care about the most. Is how is the portrayal of Spider-Man represented in the game story, not just because it's a game and that you're playing as the character, but actually getting the character of Peter Parker, 
understanding the, the complexity of him as Spider-Man, struggling the duality of his two lives and balancing them together as one. And because of that wonderful representation of the character in Spider-Man PS4, I genuinely think that that elevated the narrative to next level territory for me personally as a fan of all these characters and seeing them grow in so many engaging ways was something I'll, I'll probably never experience again in a comic book related video game or a superhero video game. Miles being the continuation of this universe one year later into this world, but now focusing on another Spider-Man with Miles himself, already establishing him in the first game and now seeing his own standalone adventure. I really enjoyed it for what it was. Gameplay was solid with the, the like you said, the Venom additions, the, the swinging tricks. Again, we didn't even mention that. The swing tricks are so they are, fun yeah. to do. Insane amount of detail and variety compared to the first game for sure. On a technical perspective, like the first game, you had three to four air tricks. This game, there's over 30. So you're going to be spending hours just swinging around, twirling around, styling out, posing like crazy as Miles. It's insane fun, and that is easily one of the biggest drawing points of the game when you're playing it for yourself. However, the story didn't impact me as much as I would have liked to compared to the first game. But for what it was, making Miles his own character, showing that he is his now own Spider-Man, standing alongside of Peter in a very encapsulating way, I think paid off in a great way in the long run so for that reason great story even though it was short but sweet fun gameplay additions for the combat and swinging and of course if you have a ps5 it probably looks gorgeous with those next gen graphics even though i personally played on a ps4 i'm going to give this game a 9 out of 10 very good all right now the last thing i wanted to talk about with you was that end credits scene um oh boy. so that was very exciting. Norman Osborn walks in, and obviously uh, Dr. Kurt Connors is in there alongside of him. So two Spider-Man villains uh, there together. And technically, if you include who is uh, in the little uh, intubation tube, it would be three villains all in one room. What did you think about that uh, that end credit scene? It's funny because it's pretty much just more of the same what we already got. Like, True. Still in that tank. For over a year, reminder, this is one year after that game. Good point. That I didn't even think about that. The tank. So it's very interesting that they still showed him a full year later still in that state. Now, we don't know how sick Harry is. Um, we do know that he inherited the disease from his mom. So a lot of people are wondering, what's he sick with in general? It's the, you know, the deterioration disease that his mom had mm. from uh, birth. And that, you know, is a uh, hereditary disease. Uh, disease that you know carried over to him uh sadly but because of the incorporation of the symbiote and how that could affect harry in such a way making him as venom instead of eddie brock that is what i'm intrigued about the most however like you said there's also the addition now of kurt connors aka the lizard so seeing him now be the scientist helping out Norman with Harry's situation is going to make it very intriguing to see what exactly their relationship is within this universe. There wasn't really anything teasing the connection between Norman and Kurt Connors in the first game. However, there was an Easter egg with the backpacks saying that Peter has spot Kurt Connors before as the lizard and tried to make a, a cure of the lizard formula through his blood. And it didn't work out actually because he then, ended up reverting back into the lizard so now seeing him back as kurt is very interesting and now of course the big factor of i want him out kurt so norman is demanding harry gets out of that dang nickelodeon gak tank and just go <laughs> flat out in the city in new york to go and fight peter as venom and I, I know that eddie brock actually does exist within this universe he was teased in the daily bugle stuff that was promoting miles morales as well as one of the previous Easter eggs in the backpacks in the first game. He signed a farewell card to Peter Parker when they both worked at the Daily Bugle. It says, great working with you from Eddie Brock. So even though a lot of people, including myself, are very interested to learn more about this version of Eddie within this universe, I think this post credit scene pretty much reaffirms the notion that, well, most likely, Harry is going to be Venom. Even though in the comics there's multiple versions of the symbiote, whether or not it's an alien life form, or what I think this version is going to be is to the Ultimate Comics, where it's right. not an alien, but it's a scientific manufacture of this biological you know, element that uh, Peter 
and Eddie's dads made together with their blood and this other substance, which is a huge storyline, which I won't get into. But if they take that type of notion, it's a scientific formula, whatever manifestation of a, a you know a project that Norman was working on with someone else into this universe trying to help Harry, it's going to be very intriguing to see exactly how that could go on to Peter for the black suit and seeing how that could obviously be a huge factor for gameplay, how that's going to affect Peter in terms of his relationships with others. Since obviously uh, what I love about the black suit is that it brings out the worst of people. And that is the exact antithesis of what Spider-Man stands for. And that's exactly what Venom as a character represents. And I'm really curious to see exactly how they're going to handle that, you know, dichotomy and duality between Peter and, and the black suit's connection, making him stronger, faster, more ruthless, but also at the price of, you know, turning those away from him, turning people away from him because of what that could do to him personally. And just the, the amount of power that he could have as Spider-Man is extremely exciting to the possibility of that. Out of everything besides the graphics, swinging, combat, all that, that is what I'm most excited for for the sequel is how exactly... Insomniac is going to add the symbiote in for the story, and I cannot wait. Evan, thank you so much for joining. Had a great time discussing Spider-Man Miles Morales with you. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to Evan. His channel will be linked in the description below. Go subscribe, turn on the notification bell on his channel, and uh, follow him on Twitter as well. Evan, thank you so much for joining, and uh, look forward to uh, doing more videos soon. Thank you very much for having me once again, Kobe. It's a true honor, and I could not be more thankful that you invite me on your amazing channel. So thank you so much. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell, and shout out to all of my elite members. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, it's only 5 bucks a month. You get a bonus members-only video every single Sunday. See you guys in the next video. Peace out.